Today we're going to take a look at the biome that is called the tundra. And for today's lesson, you'll need a copy of those notes on the tundra, as well as a copy of a crossword puzzle that you'll complete for practice at the end of this video. For each of the biomes that we'll study, we'll look at the same characteristics. A quick description of what that biome looks like, how much rainfall or snow it gets, um, the temperature and seasons, the condition of the soil, where it's located in the world, and then some adaptations of the plant life and animal life that live in it. So let's take a look at our tundra. This is the northernmost biome, and so it's, very, it's frozen, as you can imagine. It's also, in general, pretty flat because it was formed by glaciers, large sheets of ice that eroded away and flattened it out as the glaciers moved over the land. Um, because it's frozen, it doesn't allow the trees to grow because trees have to have very deep roots to support that tall structure, and the um, soil is just too frozen to allow any trees. Now, you might think with all that ice and snow that the tundra would have a lot of precipitation, but because it is so cold, cold air doesn't hold, hold very much moisture in it. So as a result, it actually only gets four to 10 inches of precipitation per year. In contrast, here in Virginia, we get 50 to 70 inches per year. So this is a much lower precipitation. It's a much drier area. Um, and likewise, the temperatures, we have long, cold, harsh winters in the the tundra and short cool summers in the tundra. Those harsh wind winters are usually well below zero. As you can see in this graph, here's our temperatures and they're well below zero during the winter time. And then during those short summer months, um, it doesn't get that much warmer. Um, usually they're pretty cool. Um, high temperatures are in the 50s Celsius during the summer months. The soil in the tundra, when you can see it, um, is very soggy. So for six to eight months, it's pretty much covered in ice. For that short summer time, when the soil actually melts and you can see it, it is very soggy. And that's because underneath it, there's this frozen layer of soil that never really defrosts. It's called the permafrost. So the top layer of soil is called the topsoil. And that stays soggy because that liquid as it melts doesn't have anywhere to go. It can't seep into the layer down below it because that layer down below, known as the permafrost, is permanently frost or frozen. Um, so it really doesn't have a lot of nutrients. Um, it doesn't have fertile soil because the soil is so thin and because it's usually covered with ice and there's not a whole lot of plant life that grows on it. The tundra, as you might imagine, is located in the far northern parts of North America, Europe, and Asia. So those are our Arctic tundras. And again, that's in the far northern parts of North America and Europe and in Asia. A large part of Russia is in that tundra. The tops of high mountains throughout the world also are considered tundras. So you can see there's a little bit of gray here in some of these really tall mountain ranges. We call those alpine tundras, alpine meaning that they're at the top of a mountain. And then finally, the very northern shores of Antarctica are also tundras, meaning that they do have that soggy soil. The rest of Antarctica is covered with ice and really is lifeless, so we won't talk about Antarctica or its biomes beyond just mentioning the fact that it's got a little section here that is a tundra. Let's take a look at some of the different wildlife in the tundra. First of all, our flora, our plant life, we'll take a look at a type of flower called the Arctic poppy. Now the Arctic poppy um, has a cup shape to its flower, which helps it absorb as much sunlight as possible. It has a fuzzy stem and it grows low to the ground, which helps it to keep warm. Looking at polar bears, they have very small ears and those ears help to reduce heat loss. They have thick layers of blubber that keep them insulated. And their fur is also clear. A lot of times we think it's white, that's the way the light hits it, but the actual fur of a polar bear is clear um, and that helps it to be camouflaged in the snow. But the skin of a polar bear underneath that clear fur is actually black um, because black absorbs the most heat and helps it stay warm. Another fauna in the tundra is the snowshoe hare. 
and the snowshoe hare has an unusual adaptation. Its fur is reddish brown in the spring and summer, and then its fur actually changes color to white in, f in the fall and the winter to help it stay camouflaged. The Arctic fox is another fauna in the tundra, and Arctic foxes have very compact, short bodies, and that helps them to stay low to the ground where it's warmest. They also have a very thick white fur that keeps it warm, and that white fur keeps it camouflaged so it can sneak up on, on its prey. A snowy owl is another type of bird that is found in the tundra and it has this very light color, which of course helps keep it camouflaged. Um, and then under that, it has a very dense layer of down feathers under those flight feathers. Um, and those are very thick and help to keep its body warm from the cold. Now that we've finished the notes, go ahead and take a look at the crossword puzzle. You're gonna use the notes from yesterday as well as the notes from today to go ahead and finish that and send me a copy of it when you're done.